where is the square root? selection you are putting this efficiency counting calculating efficiency 
So you can try to get a very good efficiency. But, but it will always be less than one. Yes, it will be always less than one. Say 90 percent, 80 percent, some of efficiency. But in that sense, maybe uh, you know to have better efficiency or losing also signal event because you want to have pure signal. Uh, pure event like you know very golden events only so there is a trade off between uh, these two things no uh, like you know which, which two? Uh, like statistics and the efficiency like no you see I mean I understand what you are saying this is again to simplify with an example is like Higgs going to BB bar the signal is common Higgs is produced with the same signal BB bar branching ratio is high, 90%. So, sigma times branching ratio is large. He is going to gamma gamma branching ratio is 10 to the minus 3. So, sigma times branching ratio is 3 orders of magnitude down. But the efficiency in the two cases compensate for this 3 order of magnitude. Because signal, if you require for example the invariant mass, the signal will have almost one efficiency. On the other hand, the background event will have the invariant mass peak is highly, highly improved. So, in this case, you gain by efficiency while you are choosing a signal with a smaller branching ratio. So, this is the trade off you are talking about. What you call statistics is the number of events. Yeah. So but here branching is the ratio. sigma times branching ratio times luminosity integrated is the number of raw events. And you multiply that by efficiency. So there is a trade off. There is a trade off. When the number of raw events is more, efficiency can compensate and give efficiency can Amplify degrade that. that number because the efficiency is small. So there is always a trade off. Which one you choose? Alright, so let me uh, then uh, end this discussion on luminosity by drawing your attention to the luminosity and here I have a picture it may change a little bit but more or less it is the same uh, so let us try to understand this figure so what you have here is the integrated luminosity that is the LSC experiment started in, let us say, 2010 and up to 2012, over this period of two years, the luminosity was 30 frame to 1 inverse. Now, this means that if you had a cross section which is 1 frame to 1, then you could expect only one event from that cross section. Frame to 1, remember this, 10 to the minus 15 bar. So, this three orders of magnitude smaller than it. On the other hand, typically, which is a new physics process, has a cross section of let us say over 100 femtoparts. Then it will be 100 times 30, and that is a reasonably good number. You have 3000 raw events, and you can say that now if I play with my efficiency, then probably I will get a signal which will beat the background in the sense that number of signal events by square root of number of background events will be more than 5. Now oh, what is going on is the 30, LS means long shutdown one, the LS experiment was stopped for upgrading the detector. And now it has started again from 2015 and it will go up to this point, up to this point, middle of 2018, when another shutdown will come, and you know, people like Professor Nike and others will be busy in upgrading the LSC detector. What to do with this so that we can do a better experiment next time? And up to that point, the luminosity will 
150, 150, that means 5 times more. Now even if you talk about a cross section, which is one femtomer inverse, you are not hopeless, because the number of raw events at least is 150. It is not a fantastic number, but with 150 expected raw signal events, you can play with efficiency to get a good signal or at least you can get a hint which is roughly denoted by S over root B equal to or greater than uh, greater than or equal to 3. Not greater than, equal to 3. If that significance is 3, then it is a hint. It is not a discovery, but it is regarded as a hint. And there it will go on increasing, you know, but by these times, I do not think I will be keeping track of this development at the NSC. 2022 is six years away, and I do not think. But some of you who will do particle physics will probably keep track of these things. This is the second shutdown, this is the third shutdown. And each time, remember, the luminosity is increasing because you are improving your detector. See, just to give you a very simple reason for this improving the detector, improving luminosity means what? It means the number of events per second will be large. That means the detector, see each time an event comes, it hits the detector. It really it makes an impact on the detector and detector is not something given by the God. It is a man-made thing. And you knock it many more times and obviously the detector poor fellow will eventually collapse. So one of the purpose of this long shutdowns is improving your detector so that on the other hand you really want high luminosity for the reason I told you that the signal to square root of background ratio goes as square root of luminosity. Therefore if you have a better significance you can improve the significance by increasing the luminosity. So you want more luminosity. So you have to do work, you have to spend money and you have to improve your detector. This is one of the purpose. Of course there are many other purposes. <coughs> but this is one of the purpose of these long shutdowns. You really want to improve your machine with respect to higher luminosity. Sir, now, yeah, you define one thing, this raw event and you define earlier n, the initial number of events in the morning lecture. Oh, yeah, yeah. You so, know, those two things are a little bit different, right? No, no, no. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Forget about efficiency. Yes. Okay. You did not apply any cart. Right. Your data is there. Right. Whether you apply cart, see what is efficiency. Your data is there. That means you have so many. Two. In fact, there is no data with no cart. What is called nominal cart? you have a number of, a bank of two photon events. Right. That is what I call the initial number. Okay. That is cross section times branching ratio times luminosity. Now you apply cut, mm -hmm. the number will reduce. Right. If that I, ratio is, that is called the efficiency. Yeah. So ro what is the difference between raw event and that? The raw event there is no branching cut. No, I mean this is a matter of definition. I mean you can also define it. I think I would define it as cross section times matching issue. Right. Thank you. I think it is better. Right, it is better. It is le less confusing. So I am sorry there was a little confusion. I think raw raw number of events simply means whatever you observe before applying any card. So that is basically n. You denoted by n earlier. So where is the chalk, by the way? I have only one left. There is some more. Oh, yeah, you, we have a good number of shots. Okay, it's here. The whole one. So, sorry, I think it is better to it is better to write the raw events as cross section times branching ratio times luminosity. luminosity. Well, there are various ways. Some people include the branching ratio in the efficiency. That means choosing a final state with good branching ratio is simply making the selection efficient. But that's 
a matter of definition. The main point is raw events is applying before the selection arts. And one more question. We would define NS, NB yes. when you define the efficiency. So the cut that you apply for signal must be the same. Must, must be the be same the for same. the background. Must be the same. Yeah, so. Must be the same. So maybe I put a clarification here. This efficiency and that efficiency are from the same set of cuts. cuts. Suppose the particle has a longer lifetime. Yes. And the, the detector length is too short. Time is so large yes. that it detects at the boundary or outside. Yes. Now that's a very uh, a thing. If time permits, I will tell you because if the particle is charged, <coughs> you are still you know, not hopeless because you see the muon often decays outside the detector, but it has certain activity in the muon chamber, which is the outer periphery of the detector, and by that you detect the so, if you like, a stable, heavy charged particle will give some activity in the muon chamber. <coughs> but whether it is detectable or not, that is a different but the particle may be neutral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For example, neutral, right then, and then neutral. No. Then, uh, then, then it is a very difficult thing. Then it is a very difficult thing. Very difficult. So I have come to the end of my basic definitions and so on. Now we have talked enough about the basic definitions and now we can go to a subject which is probably the real justification of LHC after the Higgs discovery. <coughs> because as I told him, the Higgs discovery was just one milestone. And that has been achieved, but LHC will run. So after the Higgs discovery, what is driving the force behind the LHC? Well, Higgs discovered, discovery completed the spectrum of the standard model. That is, we have discovered all quarks, leptons and gauge bosons, the force carrier particles and so on. 